So here we are. We have a fully built Sisters of Battle army. I got everything together. I got the bases on the way. They're gonna be something special. We'll go over that in a bit. But at this point, we have a fully built. We're getting closer to the deadline than I need this to get by LVO, but everything should be good to go. So now we need to figure out the most important step in doing an entire army project. That's coming up with a color scheme. So I have my previous sisters that I've painted. This scheme is gonna be a bit different because I'm gonna be using some new tools and some new paints that I haven't tried before. So I need to figure out a good color scheme to go with and something that will work with the sisters that I already have. So now it's time to figure out how they're gonna look and get down some base coats so I can work with them and go from there. So let's see what these speed paints can really do. And if they can, save me some time. I'm excited to see what they look like and come up with a color scheme that will work with this army. Time is ticking, but I think we can do it. So let's get right into it. So the first step with any paint job is making sure you get a good prime. For these models, I built them off of the base so that I could have some decorative bases for them later. This did mean I had to find a way to prime them off of their base. Utilizing some excess sprue that I had, I glued the models using super glue so that I could pop them off easy enough, but still allow me to attach them to a stick so that I could prime them. Once you've stuck them to the piece of sprue, you then take sticky tack and attach them to some basic paint stir sticks. These ones I've had for a long time, as you can tell, and they work wonders for being able to prime models. The benefit of using the sprue method is that it makes it easier to get up underneath the model without having to worry about the bases getting in the way. This will be helpful not just for priming, but also when we get to the painting stage. Once you get the models prepped, you then have to choose your primer. I went with the Army Painter Matte White and Army Painter Matte Black. Make sure you shake those cans to within an inch of their life. I shook it for 90 seconds, minute and a half, which is what they recommend, and that helps a lot. I wanted to try these paints on both a pure white prime as well as a zenithal prime. There's multiple ways to do a zenithal prime. One being just prime them black and then use an airbrush to put on a white ink. But I wanted to show a way to use it without having to use an airbrush. So for those, I primed them black and then hit them from above with a white primer. As long as you weren't too heavy handed with the layers, it still left plenty of detail to work with. So now that I had the two types of primes, both the pure white and the zenithal, I had to figure out a color scheme to go with. I really liked the purpley pink that I had from my previous models, as well as the bright blue. So I had these two options from the speed paints, purple alchemy and magic blue. They seemed to match pretty well to what I had been working with and looked like they would work well together. You really need to shake these speed paints. They come with two mixing balls inside, which really helps the process. So now I had to try to paint them and figure out how they looked. So first I put down the blue. I really liked how it looked. It was very vibrant and saturated and went on pretty easily. I liked the effect it had on the fabric parts. like on their cloaks. I 
I also wanted to test not just the zenithal prime, but also if I thinned down the paint, if it would work better or worse. The paint itself worked well, but I think that I liked the darker color better. After consulting with my wife, who just so happens to be a color theory professor, we determined that the zenithal prime with the darker pink definitely was the winner. You can see some speckling from the prime, which happens with the rattle cans if you work the white over the black. But we like that. It looked more battle ready, more grim dark, ready for the far, far future of battle. You can probably get a smoother gradient if you used an airbrush with some white ink instead of the white primer. But this works just as well, in my opinion, with a little bit of grain if you're okay with that. So now we had our color scheme. I think they looked good together. And now it's time to paint all of them. Using the speed paints took some getting used to because they're very thin. Being thin meant that it was harder to control than a normal paint that you're used to. But once you got the hang of it, it became easy to just paint within the lines, which is exactly what you want to do with these paints. One of the benefits of going with the darker versus the thinned down pink was that if I had some spots where blue got onto the armor, the darker pink could actually cover it without having to go back and touch up every single mistake. Once I got used to the technique and managed to keep myself very neat, I definitely felt like it was going to save me some time. Because once I got the coat down, I was done. I didn't have to go back and highlight, I didn't have to go back and wash, and the paints went on easy. You just had to control your brush to keep it from going where you didn't want it to. I also used the paintbrush that came with the Mega Paint set, the Wargamer Monster Brush. I thought it was ideal for working with the speed paints because it was a thick bodied brush that allowed you to keep a lot of paint within the brush, which is important when working with these speed paints because that's how you get the effect that you're looking for. In the end, I was very impressed with how the speed paints worked. They really helped me get down those base coats with ease, and they looked great. I'm very excited to go back in and pick out some more details and really make these models pop. The speed paints are really going to help me get this army together and ready for LVO. Hope you guys have all enjoyed this. I certainly have. I have been Phil, the Glacial Geek as always. And until next time, stay safe and have fun.